A over B equals C over D. Okay, let's just look at this equation. Why is it an equation? Because it has an equal sign. So we're good on that. And we have two fractions equaling one another, right? A over B and C over D. I can call this fraction A over B not only just a fraction, but a ratio. Yes, it's a comparison of two numbers. And I can call C over D also a ratio. Good. You guys get that? Comparing two numbers, comparing two numbers. Okay, when two ratios, one, two, are combined with an equal sign, you call that a proportion. Okay, and I'll write that as a definition in just a moment. But something interesting about this proportion, something interesting, and you hopefully have seen this before, should be a little bit of review. When I multiply a times d, do you guys know what I get? What's a times d? Good, a, b. And when I multiply b times c, I get b, c. And you can say d, a, and c, b. It doesn't matter the order because of what property? Commutative. The order, commutative. Good, so you could have written it d, a, and c, b, or b, c, and a, d. You have this equation. And if this were a true proportion, like if this really is true, then these two have to equal one another. And you're like, what are you talking about? So let's, let's get some numbers here. I'm going to go with some easy ones. One half, and we'll go with 13 over 26. Okay? I say that these two ratios, right, are 1 over 2 and 13 over 6. I say that they are equal. But are they really equal? Well, we can figure that out very quickly. If you didn't know 13 over 26 is 1 half, here's another way to figure it out. And by the way, guys, they get harder. What's 1 times 26? So I'm just writing my work. I get 26. What's 2 times 13? 2 times 13 equals 26. Are these two equal to one another? Yes. Then these ratios were also equal to one another. Sorry? How did you get those numbers? Uh, I, just, I just said that. I said that, and I wanted you to tell me if it's true or not. Is that an equal sign, or should it have been a not equal to sign? Let me give you another one with that same relationship. Okay. Um, we'll go with... Are those equal? Okay, you have to prove it using a proportion. So is this a ratio, 3 over 7? Is 11 over 15 a ratio? Am I saying that they're equal to one another? If they're equal to one another, then this number times this number, which is what? Sorry, 3 times 15 is 45, has to equal 7 times 11, which is? Is that true? No. No? So is that true? No. 3 sevenths does not equal 11 fifteenths. And the reason is because, and here's where I'm going to start using some terms, the cross products. Have you ever heard of that, cross products? I hope so. The cross products are not equal to one another. Okay, let me get some definitions up here, and then we'll go through some more examples. Okay, a proportion. Proportion. And there are, some, there are some really technical ways you use proportions, and I think some really cool ones. Um, has anyone seen, I'll give you this after, uh, has anyone seen um, Jurassic Park movies? The first ones, like the ones that came like in the 90s, like Jurassic Park 1, and then 2 is like the Lost World, and 3 was, I, no one remembers. Uh, so anyway, let's just say the first one. Um, they actually, if you watch it even today, it looks pretty cool because they did a good job with the effects. You know how they did it? They used proportions. And you're like, how? Okay. Um, a dinosaur, I think a T-Rex, I think it's like maybe a three-story building or a two, four-story building, like the height. Okay, when they filmed Jurassic Park, they did not build a four-story T-Rex. They built a mini T-Rex or parts of a T-Rex. So it was actually kind of cool. 
So I'm going to film Jurassic Park for you right now. Okay, all I need is a mini car and a mini dinosaur and, you know, make my landscape here. And I'm just going to get my camera. Swivel might help me out. Film it. Boom. That was Jurassic Park. They filmed it on a table. For those, a lot of those scenes, not with the people, obviously, but even with the people, they can insert them in there. You know how they did it? This is what they did. A car, like an SUV, is normally big, right? right? But you can scale it down using a proportion to make it look like a real size car, but it's actually kind of mini, right? It's a miniature car. But it has the same proportions as a regular vehicle. And the same thing with a four story dinosaur. You could get a four story dinosaur and then, okay, get that. Did you get that shot? Oh no, the leg fell off. We got to build this thing again. No, you build minis. And you, you can film it, but do you guys, when you watch that movie, can you really tell it's mini? No, it looks like, I mean, with the effects and then with the movements, it, it looks pretty real. Like, it looks like, wow, that's kind of cool. And that was 30 years, almost, it's almost 30 years ago, which is, that's baffling. 30 years ago. Sorry? Yeah, they use miniatures. They use, like, they have models. You guys heard of models. And they use that to make these big, to make it look like it's big, but they use proportions. Same thing with the people. If they have people in the distance and a dinosaur, it looks like, wow, that dinosaur is right next to that person. Actually, it's a miniature version of both, which is really cool. So a proportion, if you're looking at the, uh, at the book, can anyone tell me what a proportion is in just a moment? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, Bella, what's a proportion? A proportion is the equivalent of the quality of two or more pictures. That's all it is. And I'll put it like this. When two ratios equal one another. So it's a little modified version of that, but that's as... Uh, as basic as I want you to get it, because when two ratios are equal to one another, that's a proportion, okay? And I'm gonna go back to that A over B equals C over D, okay? Is that a proportion? Yeah. Caroline, you're, you're nodding your head. Why is it a proportion? Because two ratios that are equal to one another. Two ratios that equal another, okay? A times D equals C times B. What we call A, D, and C, D, B, we call those cross products. Cross products. So you got to know cross products because it's going to get more difficult with these numbers, and they're going to start talking about cross products. You're like, what's a cross product? It's when you multiply the numerator of the first um, ratio times the denominator of the second, or the denominator of the second, or first, times the numerator of the second, which is really hard to say, by the way. Easier to point to. Okay, those are cross products. Okay, here's an extra note. When the cross products of a proportion are equal, comma, the proportion is a true proportion. The proportions, thank you. Um, the proportions, wow, why do I keep doing that? The proportion is a true proportion, gotcha. Okay, since I'm writing um, a true proportion, is there such thing as a false proportion? Yes. 
Yes, there's a such thing. It's implied by my statement. Yes, sir? Yeah, did I give you an example of a true proportion already? I'll come back to it. I gave you one right here. Is that a true proportion? Yes. Because the cross products were equal to one another, right? Did I give you an example of a false proportion? Yes, because these cross products are not equal to each other. That would make it a false proportion. And you're going to have to deal with both. Okay, let's look at example number one. Sorry, to the definition? Yeah, sorry. Uh, let's go to example number one. It says, use cross products to determine if each pair of ratios forms a proportion. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to write those two fractions with an equal sign in between them. And then you cross multiply. And I need the work here, guys, because, yes, number 1A, example 1A, Mr. I could... Oh, I can do that in my head, but B is not so easy to do in your head, and I need to see that work. Okay, you're good with this definition? Um, yes, ma'am? Um, first, sir. Could you give the answer? Mm -hmm. Could you like, give me something special, like, check it or something? No, all, and what you're going to do on your homework is you're going to circle the equal sign. That means that they are equal, and that's it. So, like, here, 1 fourth and 4 sixteenths. And the book is going to give you this. What symbol should fit in between? Should it be an equal sign or should it be an equal sign with a slash through it? That's what your options are. So here, should it be equal sign or a slash through it? Equal sign. Okay, it's an equal sign, and this is your justification. What's 1 times 16? 16. What's 4 times 4? 16. So I need to see this. I need to see that 16 equals 16. Therefore, yes, they are equal to one another. That's it. Okay, on B, they give me, I'll separate this, 1.5 over 5, and then 3 and 9. Okay, and I need to know what should go in between. Should it be an equal sign or a not equal to sign? And this is how you work it out. What's 1.5 times 9? Well, if you're like, I don't know, okay, work it out. 13.5. I get 13.5. And then what's uh, 3 times 5? Are those equal to one another? No. no. So then these are not equal to one another. That's how the cross products works. Do you guys understand how that works? If the cross products equal one another, the ratios equal one another. If the cross products do not equal one another, the ratios did not equal one another. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. When we figure the answer out, do you want us to put the, the... Yeah, you're going to like box or circle this right here. The That's your answer. The original problem. On the original problem. Okay. Yes. This tells you what the answer is, but that's the answer. Okay. Same thing with that one right there. Okay, I want to make sure you guys are good on this. So on page 446, uh, I want you to look at number 7. Tell me a 7 should be replaced with an equal sign or not equal to sign. Use your cross products. We got it's an equal to sign. Okay, be honest with me as a class. When you looked at the problem, you thought it was equal to. I mean, you're like, yep, that's equal to. I mean, really, think about it. I, I was looking at it saying, oh, it looks close, but I don't know. How do you know? Like you cross multiply. You check it out. Is it the same thing? And it is, so that has to be. Um, the zero, no, because that could be dropped out. So you get 
equals 12.5. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. But not only is the idea of cross products helpful for knowing if it's true or not true, but you can actually find one of these numbers that is missing using the same process. So let's go example number two, see how this works. Um, this one's kind of cool because um, I, I tutor some geometry students and I know this is algebra two and pre-calc, but when you have proportions, sometimes you have everything but one of the numbers. How in the world is, can you find that other number? Let's see how to do that. Example number two. Okay, so A, C over 35 equals 3 over 7. And I know that there's another way to do it, and that doesn't matter to me because we need to solve it this way so when you get to the harder ones, you can do it. Okay, I am saying it's, an, it's a true proportion. Am I not? Am I already saying it's a true proportion? Yes. So I need to find out what number should go right here that would make this a true equation or a true proportion. So I'm going to use cross products. C times 7 is? 7C. 7C, yep. C times 7 is 7C. And 3 times 35 is? I don't know. I don't know so I will figure it out. 105. So if you're like, I, I, I didn't know that. Oh, that's okay. You can work it out. Get it. You got it. Okay. Man, if only I knew what C was. If only I knew how to find what C was. This looks kind of familiar. Or is that eighth grade that I'm thinking of? How do you find out what C is in this equation? So you divide both sides by seven, right? Yep, so like a normal equation, you get that canceled out. C equals, and then you divide it out. Okay, you guys got 15. So you know what C equals up here? 15. So we're just going to put 15 equals C. Now, can I show you something here? There is another way you could have worked this problem out, and I don't want, look. Okay, let me give you a story about the finger wag. Um, one of my favorite players growing up, in the NBA was Dikembe Mutombo. Okay, if you've heard of a guy named Mutombo, this is the guy they're talking about. Big, tall guy, basketball center. And he was, kind of, he was tall, but he wasn't like really thick. You know, he was kind of skinny. But he would block people a lot, and this is what he would do. And he did this to, uh, to some famous players too. He would block them, you know, and he would do that. Okay, you know what that means? No. no. Don't even try to do that in my house or whatever. Whatever you want to say. People don't say that anymore, by the way, do they? Don't do this in my house. This is my house. Okay, anyway. Um, so when I say this, in working it the other way, should you do it that way? Not in my house, guys. Not in my house. Okay. But let's say. <laughs> this is my house. What about my house? Oh, yeah. Okay. Not on my paper, no. Okay, you get it. Just don't do it on these. Uh, can I show you something? Can I show you something? I'll wait. Okay. Um, do you guys see 7 times what equals 35? 5. 7 times 5 is 35, correct? What's 3 times 5? Same number? Can we do it that way? No. And that's that. Yeah, so we'll... If you bring it to my house, it's out of here. So don't do it that way. Don't do that. Um, because a lot of the problems are not going to be able to figure it. I mean, you can still figure it out that way, but you're going to be, what's that number you multiply by? You're going to spend your whole time thinking about it and realize, all that time I spent thinking about it, I could have just figured it out using cross products. Boom, got it, done. So don't waste your time on those. And I want you to get a process down so that you have another tool to use. 10 over 8.4 equals 5 over D. I believe it is 5 over D. Okay. I want to find out what D is. This is a true proportion, so I'm going to use cross products. So what's 10 times D? 10 D. What's 8.4 times 5? I don't know, but I can figure it out. Oop. Nope. 
That was a sloppy zero, and it. So what'd you get? 420. 420. 42. 42, I should get. 42. 42.0, yeah, that's fine. And then what do you do to both sides? Divided by 10. And somebody give me the answer in the correct form. Callie? No. Callie says D equals 4.2. Wait, 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 wait. I thought, I thought you could just simplify that fraction. Okay. How is the, and now you have to think carefully about this. How is the original problem set up? How are the numbers? They were all either whole numbers or decimals. So I need a decimal answer. But Mr. Aaron, aren't they fractions? Yeah. Do you really want to put a fraction here and have five over a fraction as your answer? No. Don't do that. Yes, ma'am. Um, will we ever get a problem where they both equal? Um, if they give you this right here with an equal sign, they are equal. And then you're going to figure out so what that what missing part is. If they're not equal, you can't find out what that missing number is because they're not related in any way. Yeah, yeah, and thankfully, for, it, for the sake of those, it won't happen. We're not, because you can't give that problem and expect any answer. Okay, uh, back to 446. I need you guys to do number 11. Find out what X is on number 11. Okay, uh, so number 11 is 7 over 16 equals x over 4.8. By the way, you can try to figure out 16 divided by what equals 4.8. Take your time. It's going to be a while. Or you can just cancel or uh, cross multiply. No, you're going to do 16x times equals 7 times 4.8. Yeah, that's what you're doing. But you could have done it that shortcut. But it's no shortcut. No, it's <laughs> I'll give you some time. You know what? You can talk to me tomorrow and figure it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay, anyway, um, what do I do here first? I don't want the answer yet. Caroline? And uh, who got 7 times 4.8? And the, what's the actual value? Jack? 33.6. 33.6. Is that what you guys got? Okay. What's your next step here, Sophie? You multiply 16 times x, which equals 16x. Yep, 16x. You guys good on that? Next step, last step. Yep, Josie? Divide both sides by 16. Divide both sides by 16, and I get x equals max. Sorry? 2.1. Let's see what I have here, number 11. Wow, that's not helpful. Where'd you guys get? 2.1? Thank you, Max. Good job. It's funny. I looked over at my book and it says um, C Solutions Manual. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I don't have it. 2.1 sounds good. X equals 2.1. I'm going to tell you right now, this year you're going to go over proportions. Next year you're going to go over proportions. The next year they're not going to go over proportions. They're going to tell you, you already know how to do it, do it. So should you know how to do proportions in at least two years? Because they're going to assume it, and you better know how to do it. You can check it by multiplying it. Can we do a homework? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, I have one more problem. We're done. One last problem. How much time do we have? Like 10 minutes. Yes. Okay. Page 447, and this is to help you out on your homework because you're going to get, you're, you're going to be like, what do I do? Well, if you're paying attention, you might know what to do.
On page uh, 447, number 34, write a proportion that can be used to solve for each variable, then solve the proportion. Uh, 625 bushels for 5 acres, 250 bushels for y acres. What am I missing there? How many acres for the second um, scenario? Okay. I want to do this in multiple ways, but I'm just going to give you one way. All right. 625 is to 5 acres as 250 bushels is to y acres. Wait, I don't know how many acres. Let me say that again. 625 bushels is to 5 acres as 250 bushels is to y acres. Do you guys notice anything about the units? in the numerator. What are my units in the numerator? Do you guys know? Look at the problem. Look at the numbers. What are my units in the numerators? Three. Bushels. What are my units in the denominators? Three. Acres. I want to make sure they match up. Okay? If they don't match up, if I were to switch these two around, I get this number. It's not right. Okay, how do you figure this one out? What's 625 times y? 625 times y. 625 y. What's uh, 5 times 250? 1,250. 1,250, yep. Then you're going to divide both sides by? 625. And before you get to like, oh, no, what are we going to do? You know what it equals? 2. two. <laughs> this is twice. And what's my unit? Acres, acres. Wait, what if you do the hacking way? The hack way would be this is the hack way. 250 times 2.5 is 625, and 2 times 2.5 is 5. So that, I mean, you could do it, but it's like, um, I didn't know it was 2.5. Too much. Yep. Okay. All right. Your homework tonight. I'm going to pull that up from. Oh, my. You guys are giving me some great ideas to add to the homework. Oh, the best one yet. Okay. 15 to 39 odd. 15 to 39 odd. And then 47 to 49. be on pages 446 to 447. You can go ahead and get started. Make sure you read the instructions so you know what they're asking for.